Adam's own business that makes medical supplies. He factory produced everything from heart rate machines to blood calls, monitors, and more. In order to make these supplies, Adam has to order material from his suppliers like plastic and LED monitors to make this glucose monitor. But Adam needs to mix products so that he can sell them. If he makes too many products, he starts with a warehouse of inventory. How can he make sure that he manufactures just enough products and not too much? Many business owners use a system called Material Requirements Plans or MRP, which is a computer-based system for coordinating material purchasing, manufacturing, and delivery. With MRP, Adams can make sure that all parts of his business are coordinating and running efficiently. As part of the MRP system, businesses have to calculate how much products they should manufacture. So this guide their material purchasing decisions and also impact how efficiently their business runs. To help Adams to find out how many glucose monitors to manufacture, let's take a closer look at the lock sizing aspect of MRP. Adams want to implement material requirements planning in his business so that he will run efficiently. But he will have a lingering questions that he needs to answer for an MRP program to work. How can he make sure that the manufacturers were just enough glucose monitors and not too many? Lot sizing involves determines the amount of an item that need to be manufactured. Whether items need to mix 100 of monitors every week or 1000, lot sizing will help him to determine the perfect lot size or number of units. So, how does he approach this lot sizing? There are two basic approaches here. The first one is the static and the second one is the dynamic. Static lock sizing involves manufacturing the same quantity of items regularly. For example, if Adam decides that he needs to mix 100 glucose monitors per week on average, a static lock sizing approach will allow him to make 100 monitors every single week. But what happens if the amount he needs varies from weeks to weeks. He ends up with leftover inventories, sometimes called safety stocks, in the weeks where he sells less than he makes. And his safety stock can then be used in those weeks where he sells more than he makes. All that sounds okay, but what if Adam doesn't want a large safety stock and he doesn't want to store the extra monitors in his warehouse? What if, as if he wants to produce just the right number of monitors each week to keep up the demand? Dynamic lot sizing involves manufacturing different quantity of an item based on what order have been placed. For example, if Adams has a big order from a hospital one week and he needs to produce 150 monitors, then dynamic lot sizing will allow him to mix 150 monitors that week. Then, the following week, if he only needs 50 monitors, that's how many he will produce. Dynamic lot sizing does away with having a large safety stock. Adam still might have some inventory set aside in his warehouse. It allows him to respond to the demands he is seeing at the moment. Of course, there will be some problem with this approach. Adam could run into trouble if he gets a big order and he doesn't have enough time to manufacture enough the monitors, right? So for example, if a client wants to order 300 units of monitors, but his factories can only make 150 monitors by the time the clients need them, then he's out of luck. On the other hand, if he has a large safety stock, as he likely will with static lock sizing, he can make up the rest of the order from the inventory in his warehouse. Okay, Adam understand the benefit and the drawbacks of both static and dynamic lot sizing, but he still doesn't know exactly how to figure out how many monitors to produce. Should he just take a shot in a dump? How does he calculate lot size? Well, there are several methods of lot sizing here. Some of the most popular are first, the fixed order quantity. Right. The first way that Adam can calculate lot sizing is the most basic 
fixed order quantity, or we call it a FOQ for short, involve setting a lot size and then calculate how often to restock. Adam might say that he wants a lot size of 200 monitors. His only question with FOQ is how often he needs to produce those 200 monitors. He will look at the company's orders history to answer that question. But the point is that he is setting a lot size and then figuring out how often to produce that lot size. You will notice that with the FOQ method, Adam is producing the same number of monitors over and over. This makes it a static lot sizing method. Number two is the economy order quantity, which is we call it a FOQ, right? But Adam worries that it doesn't take into account the fact that it is more economically to make monitor in certain quantity. For example, it costs him less than per monitor to manufacture 500 monitor at a time than to manufacture 200 monitor at a time because the cost of material plus the cost to set up the machinery in the factory to make the monitors is lower if it's spread out over more close monitor. Economy order quantity or the EOQ involve loss sizing based on the cost of setting up and material and the demand of the products. It is essentially like FOQ, but with the added elements of considering the cost of producing the products at different quantity. So Adam might set his lot size at 500 cocoa monitors and then adjust these timelines according to that. Since it's based on and similar to FOQ, EOQ is also a static lot sizing method. The third one is the lot for lot. FOQ and EOQ seem pretty straightforward, but Adam isn't sure that static lot sizing is right for him. He rather change his lot size depend on what order are coming in. So lot for lot, lot for lot is a dynamic lot sizing method that involves producing just enough units to fulfill orders and maintain small safety stock. For example, let's say Adam wants to keep a safety stock of 150 cocos monitors in his warehouse just in case a client wants an order quickly. And let's say that he gets an order for 600 cocos monitors. He will then produce 600 monitors if he already has 150 units in his warehouse. On the other hand, if he used hundreds of his safety stock last month, he will manufacture 700 monitors, 600 to fill the order, and 100 to maintain his safety stock. With lot for lot, then Adam is simply keeping up with demand and maintaining a small safety stock because the number he manufactures will change based on his order. This is a dynamic lot sizing method. The fourth one is the periodic order quantity. Adam likes the idea of the lot-for-lot lot method, but it sounds pretty stressful. It seems like he will be scrambling to make his order all the time. If there is a better way, one in which he can plan but also be dynamic. Periodic order quantity, or we call it a POQ, is a dynamic lot sizing method that involves producing enough units to fulfill order over a specific time period and maintain a small safety stock. Let's say Adam, Adam let's say that Adam knows that every every month the order from his very clients total about 1,500 glucose monitors. Then in March, he will plan to manufacture 1,500 units of glucose monitors plus whatever he needs to maintain his safety stock level. In POQ, Adams could choose any time period to focus one a week or a month or three months or another amount of time. But the point is, he will figure out the lot size for that time period and manufacturing step plus whatever he needs to maintain his safety stock. Because the lot sizes can change from periods to periods, POQ is a dynamic lot sizing method. Is it important to note that in this lesson, we talk about lot sizing in terms of how many units to produce or how many units to manufacture. However, lot sizing also applies to purchasing materials. For example, 
Adam can use any of the log sizing methods such as POQ or FOQ to determine how many LED screens he needs to purchase to fulfill his order for glucose monitor. What's the lesson summary here? Lot sizing involves determines the amount of an item that needs to be manufactured. There are two basic approach of lot sizing. Static lot sizing involves manufacturing the same quantity of item regularly and usually result in a large safety stock of inventory. In contrast, dynamic lot sizing involves manufacturing different quantity of items based on what order have been placed and result in a low safety stock inventory. And there are many methods for lot sizing, including fixed order quantity or FOQ in short, which involve setting a lot sizing and then calculating how often to restock. Economy order quantity or we call it a EOQ, which involve lot sizing based on the cost of setting up and material as well as the demand of the products. Lot for lot or L for L, which involve producing just enough units to fulfill orders and maintain a small safety stock periodic order quantity OQ, which involve producing enough units to fulfill orders over a specific time period, plus maintain a small safety stock level. FOQ and EOQ are static lot sizing methods, while L for L and POQ are dynamic lot sizing methods. All right. So as always, if you like this video or you learn something new, give me a thumbs up and subscribe with notifications. My name is Vivian. Thanks for watching and I see you in my next video.